I'm not going to change my mind, but I will explain myself. What am I talking about? Something I get asked about all the time. Stay tuned. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight-up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. And yeah, this is something that is a daily question, a daily question. Although uh, sometimes I'm wondering why I don't get it more. And I think that's because I don't get this question more than I do, because I think people know that my head usually explodes when people ask me this question. So they kind of hear through the grapevine, like just whatever you do, don't ask Christy this question. We're talking about cheating today. So what's wrong with just once? What's wrong with just once? Well, let's break it down here. Let's talk about cheat meals. Let's talk about cheating. Let's talk about indulgences. Uh, Let's talk about, I don't know what you want to call them. I mean, going off plan, taking a break. I don't know what I'm trying to think of all the bullcrap things people say, but let's talk about this on this podcast. Let's break it down. What really happens when you have cheat meals and what it does to you and how it impedes your progress. If it impedes it at all, let's talk about it. So years ago, When I started Code Red, I remember I've been doing Code Red like this for almost 14 years. So 2010 is when I started writing nutrition programs. 2011 is when I started writing nutrition programs for people. Now, it is basically, with the exception of a few tweaks, the same program as it is today. Because I discovered pretty early on, or I discovered why... um, I discovered the power of a high fat, low carb diet. Now I used to, I use, like I said, there are a few tweaks back in the day. It was only $149 a program. And back in the day, uh, I hand wrote them on piece of paper and I put them in a manila envelope and I handed, you know, somebody wrote me a check or gave me cash. You know, there were no cards exchanged there. You know, it was much more a basic program, but it was the same program, the same concept. And I used to allow cheat meals. I did. I actually used to allow cheat meals. And I have this program on my iPad that uh, has a spreadsheet on my program on my iPad that has tracked um, that is what is what I use to track people years and years and years ago, 10 years ago. Um, And I can see all my old clients, their names and their measurements and and their body fat percentage. And because I only used to see people in person. So I was able to do a caliper pinch test on them. And I was able to really good, good metrics on them, you know, because they would come into my office downtown Boise. And that's the only I didn't I didn't utilize the power of the Internet until 2016. So I didn't understand. I only saw people in person. So back then, if you look at, at people's progress back then, um, it was much, much, much slower. And, and that's partly because I would allow people to have cheat meals because that's always, you know, I come from a bodybuilding background and that's what bodybuilders have always done. They've allowed themselves to have one cheat meal per week. Uh, and so I kind of thought, you know, this is before I realized people like the weird, <laughs> this is the average American. Most of them don't work out at all. Most of them, uh, you know, they're metabolically broken. And of course, over the past 14 years, people have actually gotten fatter and sicker. I can track that as well. Um, and sidebarring here for a second, I just got done writing about 300 nutrition programs this past week. And I noticed as a whole, the starting weight is so much higher than it used to be starting weight used to be like, it used to be back in the day, 180 to 220 was the range. Now we're finding 240 to 300 
is where a lot of people fall in fall in. In fact, this past week when I was writing over, you know, 300 nutrition programs, it was nothing to see someone in the 300s and up to 400. I had a couple of people that were in the 400. One girl was 19 and she was 401 pounds. So, um it just as a whole it's people are getting bigger and people are having to lose a lot more weight. I mean, having to lose a hundred pounds on code red, is just not something we even bat an eye at anymore. It's just almost a normal thing for someone to have to come down a hundred pounds. So coming down 150 to 200 pounds really just is not a big deal on code red. We see it all the time. We know how to deal with it. We're equipped to handle it. We're trained to handle it. We know, we know how to handle people that are morbidly obese and that have to lose a tremendous amount of weight. We know how to handle loose skin. We know how to handle, uh, if your hair falls out, we know how to handle all that stuff on code red. So as a whole, I just noticed looking back on my past records, um, people, their starting weight was so much lower back then than it is now. The starting weight is just across the board so much higher than it, than it used to be. Um, and we know this from, from Americans just getting sicker and fatter every year. And that's been the past 70 plus years, uh, since the dietary guidelines came out, since Eisenhower had his heart attack an obese chain smoker had his heart attack and we blamed fat for it. You know, all that stuff has, uh, you know, we came out with the low fat dietary guidelines. We, we started, we did, we quit talking about sugar. We started saying, you know, all these things that were just not true. You need nine to 11 servings of grain a day. And it has made us the fattest and the sickest in human history. So I know this anyway, but I got, I, I really saw it with the numbers. And so looking back on my past programs, even though people were starting off much smaller than they are starting off now with my clients nowadays, um, I let people have cheat meals and the weight loss was much slower. And what I noticed is because people, people were having that cheat meal per week and they were taking one step forward and two steps back. And a lot of people were not able to stop cheating once they started cheating they couldn't just have one cheat meal. And that's the gist of this entire podcast. Well, what's wrong with just one? But it's not ever just one. I like to say it ain't never just one. It ain't never just one. The problem is it's really not just one. And if, if my clients having two meals a day, 14 meals a week, if they truly could and they can't, and I don't even allow them to even do this as an option, but if they truly keep could, could do perfectly balanced meals and do perfect everything, 100% of the rules, 100% of the time, 13 out of those 14 meals, we wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would be worked out of a job. They wouldn't need me. We, we're not, we're not just doing that. And it's never just one. It's one cheat on that Costco, Costco aisle with that specific Costco sample on that Costco aisle. And then they go two aisles over and they see the other sample on that aisle. Well, it's just this one sample. No, it's not. You had a bite of your kid's happy meal in the car on the way to Costco. Then you had a caramel macchiato. You stopped and got that at Starbucks on the way to Costco, but it's just one caramel macchiato. It's just one French fry for my kid's happy meal. And then when you got to Costco, it was just one sample from that aisle and just one sample from that aisle and just one and just one and just one and just one over the course of the day, you've had all these just ones. So it's truly, I've never seen anybody just have one, including myself. I've never seen anyone just have one. So when I let people have a cheat meal per week, they didn't just have a cheat meal. And then it set them, then it just set them up for failure. So let's just talk about, let's, let's break down what happens if you really truly just have one, because even that's problematic. And you're like, well, what if I could really have just one? Then Christy, can I, can I do it? Listen to this before you, before you decide, listen to this. You are completely detox from carb, from crap carbs from ultra processed carbs and sugar. Remember your taste buds re taste buds regrow themselves every 10 days or so. So you have totally, you, you just completely reset yourself. You're past the brain fog. You're past the detox. You're, you're not, your brain's not, you know, going crazy with the sugar. You're not going through detox. 
you're on a good, a good, you got good momentum through the week. You got good momentum on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, good momentum. Everything's going really well. You get your water in, you've got clear head, you've got nice, even energy output because now your body without having access to ultra processed carbs and sugar, your body is now tapping into its stored body fat as fuel, which is a much more even output of fuel, steady, even output. You don't have the spikes and the dips. You have a steady, even output of fuel for your body because we have all, I got several hundred thousand calories and stored fat on my body. So your body's really finding its groove now. Everything is going great. You've got good sleep. Your, your hands and your knees aren't hurting. Your brain fog is gone because you got the sugar out of your system. You're really on a good, you're, got, you're just, you're, you're juking and jiving. Everything is going, you're trucking right along. Everything's going just fine. And then Saturday night, and you decide to have that one cheat meal a week that you think you need. I don't even, I mean, pick your cheat meal. We could, we could talk about pizza. We could talk about Olive Garden. We could talk about Red Lobster. We could talk about Applebee's sampler. We could, we could go into all kinds of things that you could, that you could have wine. You could uh, have all kinds of sugar. You could go out to stone cold uh, or cold stone. You can tell, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> I think there's a cold stone uh, over off of Vista. Isn't there on the way to the airport? I, I just, I'm not an ice cream person, so I don't, in fact, there's a really, really popular ice cream shop right downtown off, off eighth and main street. And, uh, cause I see when I walk Hazel down there, I see people just lined up out of there. Um, it's so it's just, it's supposed to be really good. I don't know. I'm just not an ice cream eater. I don't eat ice cream. Not a thing. That's, that's not something that I would do. Um, and so, we could talk about any type of cheating, you know, name your cheat meal. It really doesn't matter because most of it is made with a uh, highly inflammatory oils. Most of it's got sugar in it. Most of it has fillers. Most of it has MSG, those highly addictive ingredients. So you eat something like that. And normally when people do it, they eat a lot. They really have quite a bit of it. And now your blood sugar spikes, your blood sugar is going to spike with everything you eat. The spike is not the problem. It spikes really high when you have crap. It's only going to spike normal high when you have just steak and asparagus and cream cheese and cottage cheese and eggs and bacon. You know, you're going to get that normal spike. Blood sugar is going to go up. The pancreas is going to release insulin to bring your blood sugar down, down so you don't die. Totally normal. Problem is with ultra processed junk food and inflammatory seed oils and sugar, it's going to spike your blood sugar really, really high, really high, like abnormally, dangerously high. Okay. Then it's going to take loads of insulin to bring your blood sugar back down. Loads and loads and loads and loads of insulin. So now you're triggering a tiny, now high levels of insulin, high amount of insulin is drives diseases. High blood sugars drive diseases. High amount of insulin drives diseases. So that it's going to take, it's going to really overload your pancreas to bring you back down, but it doesn't just bring you back down. It brings you down slowly over the course of a, think of a bell curve. Think of a rainbow. See the spike is fine. And the spike back down is fine. That's what a normal, healthy blood sugar looks like from someone like me. I eat my eggs and bacon in the morning. Bam. Blood sugar spikes up normal. I don't know. Uh, 120. 110, 120, and then it's going to come right back down because my body knows how to process that. My insulin is, I'm insulin sensitive, so it only takes a small amount and my blood sugar comes, bam, right back down. So it's going to go up and it's going to come right back down like the Tetons, just bam and bam. And it's going to maintain, you, you want that. You want the spike, but you want it to come right back down. That's not what happens when you cheat with, high, with ultra processed food, sugar, alcohol, seed oils. MSG, things like that. It spikes, but then it goes, ooh, and it takes hours to come. And it stays up and it hours and hours and hours and hours and hours for it to finally come back down. You don't want that. You don't want that. You Because why? Insulin is the fat producing hormone. When insulin is present, you store fat. We want insulin. You have to have insulin. It's a vital hormone. You'll die without it. You only 
You want a small amount for a quick amount of time because you want it to do its job and get out of the way. When insulin is gone, all the fat burning hormones can now come back out to play. So you don't want this long drawn out hours and hours and hours of your blood sugar coming back down. And that's what happens during these normal cheat meals. It takes hours to come back down. Let's say you do it at night. Your liver automatically detoxes from 2 to 4 a.m. That's, that's for all of us. Our, our liver detoxes between 2 and 4 a.m. So you've gone out. You have a 7 p.m. dinner reservation. Your dinner comes by 8. Um, you eat. You stop. You know, you're done by 930. You're home by 10. I mean, it's gonna, your, your blood sugar is going to stay up, and you are, you are really a mess pretty much all night long. And now it's time for your liver to detox and clean itself up. Normal cleanup, normal cleanup. But what is it doing? It's trying to process. It's busy trying to process all the crap you had a few hours ago. And now it is just frustrated. It's overloaded. So it's now storing these, these different foods and different chemicals that are floating around your body. Most of it's not food. It's trying, it, it's frustrating. It's trying to process it. It can't do all of it. It's overloaded. So it's just storing it as body fat and it's storing it as visceral fat. And that's a dangerous, very dangerous fat. And that's how you get fatty liver. That's one of the reasons, the ways you can get fatty liver is your liver just gets frustrated because it can't do the job quick enough. It's overloaded and it stores your, your excess as fat on the body. Especially my sister, Carrie said the fattest she ever got was getting off the night shift, eating. So she got off the night shift at 7 a.m. She would eat a big meal right then and go right to bed. And so sleeping right after a big meal, it, it's just, it, you're just, um, you're really packing on the fat. You're really overloading your body because your body already has its normal cleanup to do and detoxing to do to get you ready for the next day. And now you're just further overloading. It can't even do its regular job. It's like a janitor having to come in into a, a, and do its normal office cleaning, but there was just an office party. So now they're going to spend the whole time they normally clean and they got to just clean up the party mess and they don't even get to empty the garbage. You don't even get to do the right good or cleaning. So now you've got yourself, um, a really big mess and now we've got inflammation. So now you're hanging on Remember, for every gram of carb, your body hangs on to 3.7 grams of, of water. So now you're swollen everywhere. You're hanging on to a ton of water and that water weight is real weight. You know, I know we call it water weight and in the beginning, the first week on code red, people usually dump a lot of weight, seven to 10 pounds of water weight. And they think, oh, that's just water weight. It, it still has to come off. It still has to come off so that the rest of the weight can come off. It's legit. It's legit. Just like it's legit that you get it back off before it turns into real weight that water weight you're ho holding on to, it will turn into real weight if you're not careful. It, so it, your weight goes up, you are hanging on to water, but you have stored fat, by the way, over the last 24 hours, you have packed on, you have stored fat. And um, so now you've got all this water weight, which does make things a little harder to zip up and harder to button up. You feel it in your hands, you feel it in your face, you might be puffy around the eyes. You're going to feel it in your knees. You're going to feel it in your shoes. Everything's puffy. All the joints are puffy. Everything's hang on in fluid. Your body just hasn't gotten through all this junk food. MSG is nasty stuff. Seed oils and vegetable oils are nasty stuff. We're seeing a bigger blood sugar spike from seed oils than we do from white refined table sugar. We're seeing a bigger, we're seeing a bigger spike from maltodextrin and dextrose, which are the fillers used in some of the sweeteners than we do from white refined table sugar. White refined table sugar isn't the nastiest stuff out there, by the way. There are a lot of things you consume that's nastier. And seed oils and vegetable oils are, you know, like canola oil, safflower oil, vegetable oils, things like that. Um, they are, they're, they're, they're terrible for you. Um, so we're seeing even bigger problems with those. So you're having just a whole host of problems in your body. Um, you might be nauseous to your stomach. Now your stomach's swirling around. You might be nauseous. Your, your, um, your digestive system is completely messed up. Now you could be constipated or you could have diarrhea. I know for, for me, if I go off plan, it's usually comes right out of me 
quick in the form of diarrhea. Like I'm, it doesn't, I don't do my gut bugs do not like it. And my, uh, my, uh, digestive system really reacts harshly to it when I have anything off plan. So I need to be like near a bathroom if I ever have anything off plan, cause it's going to come right through me. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be gross. It's going to, I'm sorry. It's just, it's, that's the way my body is just does not like that food. And it tells me, especially the older I get, the less I tolerate it. That's just the way it is. My gut bugs just, when they're not happy, my digestive system lets me know it. And some of you guys have real sensitive digestive systems anyway. You need to be taking the, the code red probiotic anyway. So we're seeing all sorts of problems with that one cheat meal on Saturday night, you know, at 7 p.m. when you ate at 8 p.m. And now you've swollen and your weight is up four, five, six pounds all week long. Now, Sunday, Sunday's ruined. Sunday, you feel like crap. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe by Thursday, maybe by Friday, you might get some relief. But it has taken you an entire week to get that weight back down. An entire week to detox from the crap. An entire week to metabolize all that. An entire week of watching that number on the scale be up four, five, six pounds. An entire week of lost progress. We count our code red. We count things by weeks. Every Friday, you turn in your weight to your VIP coach. And over the weekend, she's going to go over that weight with you during the weekend, some point, whatever her call is. And that's how we kind of, we do things week to week to week. We expect at least 1% of your body weight to come off every week, which is really, really easy. It really is easy. And so that you've just wasted a week out of the four weeks that if you bought a month, you've got four weeks with us. Uh, if you're in VIP for only a month, you know, it's, it's, I, I those weeks turn into months, turn into years. I don't want to waste any weeks. I have my own bodybuilding coach and I check in with her every weekend, every Friday night, every Saturday morning, somewhere around then I'm going to send her my weight. I'm going to send all my stats to her. I'm going to send progress picture to her. I don't want to waste any time. Money doesn't grow on trees around me. And I don't want to waste her time or my time. I want to make my time count. You've just wasted it an entire week. And now we're back to Saturday night again, and you decide to go back out with your husband and we do it all over again. And that's what I was seeing that kind of pattern with my clients. When I allowed that to happen, they were not making progress. And reality is people pay for weight loss with me. They pay to lose weight. And I see these doctors, um, a lot of these well-meaning, highly educated, um, very, very smart MDs, they're in the kind of the keto world, the keto carnivore world. And they're saying calories don't matter. Calories don't matter yet. Calories matter. And the weight loss matters. Now don't worry about losing weight. Just worry about healing your body. And I've said that too. Just worry about healing your body. The weight will drop off on its own, but people come to me for weight loss. And I want to say to those doctors, clearly no one has hired you for actual weight loss, because if they did, you would be more concerned about the LBs coming off. People want to see the weight drop on the scale. And it's my job to make sure that's happening. So that's why I put so much pressure on you. I want to see that scale drop. Yes. I want to see the jeans out of the dryer fit looser. Yes. I want to see your circumference measurements with the tape measure. I want to see those come down. Yes. I want to see progress in the progress pictures. That's why the scale is only one of four ways we use to measure progress. We also measure progress by the medication being reduced or eliminated. We also measure progress by watching your a one C drop and your fasting blood sugars drop. We also measure uh, progress by seeing that now you don't have migraines every more every day. We also measure progress by, by knowing that your feet don't hurt anymore and that your arthritis has gotten better and that your eyesight has improved. There are many ways your confidence has gone up. Your libido is back. There are many ways to measure progress, but bottom line, people pay me to get weight off of them. They've got to see the number on the scale. When people ain't seeing that number coming down, they get discouraged really fast. And in bodybuilding, we don't, uh, we don't really pay as much attention to the scale. We pay more attention to measurements and progress pictures and strength in the gym and body fat percentage and things like that. So it is, um, it it's, 
it's different. It's different, but you need to, <laughs> you need to see some progress. Now let's speak of, let's talk about bodybuilders for a second, because it is very well known in the bodybuilding industry that most bodybuilders have. And I've talked about this on other podcasts. Most bodybuilders do uh, this once a week cheat. Let me get a drink of water. And I also want to take this opportunity to show you our new code red Stanley style cups. Our Stanley style cups. These are also 40 ounces. They fit in the cup holder. You can get them engraved. They have the handle. They have the straw. They're excellent. And they do hold 40 ounces. Now we've discontinued our old, our old bottle. And we are now carrying only these and our 25 ounce bottles. Let me get a little drink here. So good. Sorry about that. You can get those off our website. We have nine colors to choose from. ASMR. <laughs> all right. All right. So bodybuilders, it's well, well known. They have a cheat meal every week, but consider this and you are not a bodybuilder. Consider that you, you can't compare, you can't cherry pick guys. You can't say, well, bodybuilders do it. I can do it. Oh, really? You want to do what bodybuilders do? Do you want to do what they do? Cause I, cause I can tell you firsthand what they do. Cause I've competed in two bodybuilding competitions now, one, one 20 years ago and one uh, in April of 23. So I know a little bit about this and I've been bodybuilding for 25 years. So I know a little bit about this now bodybuilders eat They're They're different from code red. They eat five to six times a day. They train at least an hour of weight training every day, usually six days a week. They take one day off. They usually eat are um, drinking a lot of water. And they are uh, doing their cardio daily as well. A different, depending on what stage, if they're in prep or if they're in their, their improvement season and their building season, but they're always doing some form of cardio. They're doing 30 minutes uphill walk on the treadmill. They're doing an hour on the stair climber. So you're looking at at least two hours. You're looking at around two hours a day of working out for the typical bodybuilder. Um, not counting if they're in prep, if they're in prep, Katie bar the door, it's really get It gets nasty. It gets pretty nasty, pretty quick. It's really a lot. I know that towards the end there, the last couple of months, right before my show, I was working out five hours a day. So it got pretty intense and it was very, very consuming. I was at 19,000 steps a day. Very, very, very consuming. Um, very difficult. So they are training hard. They are walking at least 10,000 steps a day. They're drinking a lot of water. They're sleeping at least eight to nine hours a night. They're taking high quality supplements. All of their food is organic, very, very, very clean, uh, usually from a local farm, measured out extremely meticulously. They're hitting their macros and their calories perfectly every day. So seven meals, six meals a day, that's 42 meals. 42 meals. So 41 meals are 100% perfectly balanced and they're training hard every single day and they're taking supplements and they're sleeping nine hours a night at least. And they have one cheat meal and, and it might even not even be a cheat that you and I would even do. They might have a hamburger and they won't even eat the fries and they won't have a chocolate shake. They'll have a clean hamburger, maybe a bison burger with an organic slice of cheese with two pieces of bread. I mean, it's still, even their cheat meal still fits into their macros. When I say cheat meal, that still doesn't mean they're doing ice cream and pizza. They don't do that. They do a clean, they do clean cheat. It's not dirty, it's clean. So you can sit here and say, well, bodybuilders do it all you want. They're not going face down at Olive Garden like you are. So. And all the other factors. Now, of course, we know that exercise is not a way to address your weight problem, but bodybuilding is a whole different game. Um, if you truly want to be a bodybuilder, then you can probably get away with that one cheat meal a week, but you got to do the program exactly the way they do it. That is their life. Most competitive bodybuilders, that is their life. They don't do much else. And that's how they can get nine hours of sleep a night. They're extremely meticulous with every area of their life. They're very clean on even their water. Everything they do is very, very, very clean. So that one small piece of food called a cheat that they might eat out of 42 meals, 41 of them are perfect. And then that one meal, it's not even, it's not even Ben and Jerry's you guys. It's a very clean, it might be like sushi. 
you know, they're already eating salmon and rice. They're just having sushi. So it's, it's not like what you think. And I see these influencers on Instagram and TikTok, and I see they have these sick bodies, like they're bodybuilders and these girls and guys. And they're you know, like the rock Dwayne, the rock Johnson, you know, is a great example. He always posts his cheat meals, which is usually a big stack of pancakes. I mean, the stack of pancakes is like this. First of all, he's on PEDs. Second of all, he trains like a madman. He, he's, he's, he's training hard every day. Hard, hard, hard. He's a very big dude. Um, and of course he's enhanced. We, we, we all know he's on steroids, PEDs, other things. And he doesn't show you the 41 other perfectly balanced meals he eats a week with zero mistakes. And he just shows you that stack of pancakes. And, and a lot of influencers do that. They don't even show you eating. They don't even show them eating the whole thing. They just show, they'll be like pizza night. And you're like, geez, I can look like them and eat pizza. They might probably not even eating it. They're probably just posing it for a sponsorship or something. Don't believe everything you see. It's not all what you think it is. Just because you see a fitness influencer online or some competitive bodybuilder looking like they're getting ready to put a piece of pizza in their mouth doesn't mean you can, doesn't even mean they did it. It definitely doesn't mean you can do it. You don't, first of all, a lot of it's fake. Like I said, don't believe everything you say. But number two, you're, it's, you're cherry picking. You don't even know what they're going through. And there's so much of it has to do with genetics with these bodybuilders and their age and things like that. I can tell you that I can't, I can't get away with that. I'll be 48 years old. Uh, this year. And I just can't get away with the cheating. Like I used to, when I was younger, even then I couldn't get away with it. Let me tell you something. When I was in prep with Eric, my coach, we did eight months, eight months of a grind. Like, I mean, it was so tough to get me. I lost 30 pounds. I got on stage. I competed. I placed in the top three. I'm so super proud of myself. And I remember there's one part of the film that you'll see when my film comes out, and I said, um, there was one part where I go, oh, it was right around Christmas time. And I said, my training is going great. My weight is great. I look great. I'm right on track. And my coach won't let me have any kind of a cheat meal. I begged him for one, you guys, please, please let me have a cheat meal. And he said, no, he said, no. So eight months went by and I did not get one. And yet I was doing great. And it probably wouldn't have made a difference because it really would have been just one but he wouldn't even let me have one. He knew it was going to send me into a cascade of problems. He knew it was going to, it was just going to make me sick. And then I was going to start craving sugar again. You reintroduce that back into your body. It is just nothing but trouble. And even he would not let me do that on an eight month long trek, eight months of dueling daily grind, eating the same thing every single day, training hard, out walking, getting in my steps, twice a day cardio, five hours a day of training. And I was not even allowed to go off plan even once. So when I say to you, no, it's for your own good. You, you got to remember why. You know what that stuff tastes like. I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it better than what you think, especially if you attended my throwing it all the way seminar. I get it. But I also get the other side of things where you, we, we all know what that tastes like. And we all know we're going to feel like crap afterwards. That stuff has done us no good. So why do we want to set ourselves back an entire week of progress for literally a moment or a few minutes of something tasting good? And it only tastes good while you're chewing it. You can't taste it after it goes down your esophagus. There are no nerve endings. You can't, there, you can't, you're not, there are no taste buds. There's nerve endings. There are no taste buds as it goes down. So what it's really only the, the few moments that it's in your mouth. And is that worth it? Is it really worth it? Is it worth the one week setback? I've seen it set people back for a good 10 days, 11 days. I've seen that happen with people because they, they, it's, it's so volatile in their bodies and it just gets them out of control and it really wreaks havoc on every part of their body. I mean, when you got good momentum and you're, you're going at it, the last thing you want to do is screw that up and throw, a, throw a, a bump in the road like that. 
we know what it tastes like and we know that crap has done us no good. And I get, I, I believe me, like I said, I get it. I understand. And I understand the reasoning that you're doing with yourself. Well, I'll just start over tomorrow. I mean, we have had every single coach that has ever left code red has gained back their weight. And if anybody would understand, they would understand. They would understand because they watched people, they coached people who have regained their weight. And we have one particular coach and she said, who left code red years ago. And she said it all, she lost over a hundred pounds and gained it all back. And she said it all started with a, with um, a muffin, a cupcake. That's what it was. It was a cupcake left over from our grandchild's birthday party. What do you, where do you think I get that example from? I always say, and they, she kept saying, I'll, I'm going to eat these muffins. So they'll be out of the house. So I'll start over tomorrow. I'll start over tomorrow. And tomorrow never came. The most dangerous word in the human language is tomorrow. Tomorrow never came for her. She never started over. She never got control. And she's a hundred pounds up back up and just as unhealthy as she ever was because of that, because of, because of saying I'll start over tomorrow. And she didn't. And I'm not saying you can't start over, but it's really hard to come back after a cheat. Most people struggle with it. Most people can't, they, they can't pull themselves back up. And so I just say no cheating to any, I just say none of it, none of it. And anytime anybody comes to me and says, I'm thinking about doing code red, but I want to know about cheat meals. I just say, nope, nope. I'm, you're not, this is not the right program for you because that just means they don't want it bad enough. If there's, if they, if they're, they need to lose 86 pounds and they're, they're still talking about cheating. They're not sick of their own bull crap enough. Cause if you need to lose 86 pounds, all you can think about is losing 86 pounds. Not when can I have my wine again? So it's, it's always, it, it's always peculiarly peculiar to me when somebody says that. And I, I just say, no, Come to me when you're really serious. Cause you're not serious at night that right now you're not that serious. You're not, you don't really want this or you wouldn't even be thinking about wine and Oreos. It's just not worth it guys. It really isn't when you see what's at what's at stake here and what's at risk and you know, obesity kills more people than drugs and alcohol combined. We have a serious problem in our hands here and I'm watching the numbers. I'm watching people get worse. I'm trying to do my part in this whole thing, but it's hard. It's hard. The, the deck is stacked against us. My program isn't easy, but it's simple. Nothing's going to be easy, but it's simple, especially compared to a lot of stuff out there. It's a proper human diet, but maybe you'll get a better understanding now why I just don't allow cheat meals. I've never seen it work with people. I don't even see bodybuilders do it. You guys, I mean, I once in a while I'll see an off season bodybuilder do it, but anybody that's serious, they don't want to because they don't want to impede their progress. And when you really get into that mindset that you're, you just don't want to, you don't want to, I want to keep going. I want to keep this whole thing going. You guys heard that podcast with Lori Stobart. Remember what she said? She, she, it, she didn't cheat once in 18 months because she just said, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. And she did. And she's maintaining well below goal weight. We have a buffer zone for everybody. And she's well within her very far below her buffer zone, living life, doing great. And you, you heard her for 18 months. She said, I just didn't want to, I didn't even, I didn't even have the desire to, because I'd been fat for so long. I had beat myself up for so long. Why with, with my own choices, why do I want to do that? Again, why do I want to reset myself? I've got such a great momentum. Why do I want to do that? And she just kept going. You really got to get your head wrapped around it. That stuff has done you no good. You know what it tastes like. You know what you're going to feel like tomorrow. You really want to reset yourself another week and be another week behind, behind, behind the goal weight. You don't. You can hit that 10% per month. You really can. But you got to do 100% of the rules 100% of the time. And getting your head wrapped around your program, that's where the mental part comes in. Just getting your mind set 
I gave you your plan. I gave you the tutorials. I gave you the instructional manual. I gave you the instructional video. I gave you all the training. I gave you the onboarding meeting. I gave you all the help with the coaches. I given you daily messages. I given you a weekly accountability. I give you a weekly meeting. I give you all the supplements. I give you the workshops. I give you the promos. I give you the ringside membership. I give you everything you need in VIP. I give you everything. Now you just had to set your mind that you're doing this and that you don't have room in your life for cheating and you're unstoppable at that point. I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to rebel weight loss and lifestyle. If you are looking for some hardcore accountability to get and keep this weight off, look no further because I've got VIP connection. This is the ultimate connection to me just short of me sleeping on your couch. You're going to get three daily messages from me in real time directly to you. You're going to submit your weight every Friday. We're going to go over it in a weekly meeting on Sunday nights, and I'm going to give you feedback. You'll have access to a monthly VIP breakfast with me and Boise, a monthly VIP supplement box, access to any workshop, any PDF promo that I hold for that month. You'll have access to the ringside membership. And best of all, you'll have a fully customized nutrition program written just for you. We're talking about over $3,000 total value for $3.97 a month, and you can cancel anytime. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash VIP to check that out.